welcome back to another episode of Us Anxious Folk. I am here with the very radiant Stacey Fisher. Um, Stacey is, I've wrote this down just because there's a, there's a lot of things. Stacey oh. Fisher, integrated nutritional health coach, women's coach, human design reader, um, which is so interesting, speaker, writer, um, you also organize events and stuff. So you're really doing all the things. <laughs> and oh, she's, that sounds good. she's lovely looking too. So hello. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's just so nice. You know, you can talk about you very often like that. Um, <laughs> thanks for having me. I'm so excited. I feel like this is going to be a really, really cool conversation. Yes, me too. I, I can tell that already. It's very cool because yep. I haven't spoken about, um, I mean, human design is new to me. Um, but what I know so far is very interesting. And I am so excited to hear how this relates to um, like your anxiety story, but also, you know, the way that other people can deal with anxiety. So yeah, yeah, I'm stoked. Um, but great. to start off, please tell me your anxiety story. So... I had was working in Melbourne in um, I was working law and we decided to we had an investment property in Port Douglas we decided to head for the trees get rid of the suits get rid of that lifestyle and um, head up there and then not long after we arrived there I fell pregnant with my first mm -hmm. and um first uh, taught, taught a child up there and then um, after I had her I started to I started to get this nausea this nausea that would not go away it was like I can tell you thousands of dollars spent specialists left right and center um, you know I'd wake up with this nausea and it, it was three years in the end it was there and um, no one could figure out what it was no one could figure out what it was. You know, I've, I think I spent like $30,000, something stupid like that, trying to figure out what this was. And then one day, I can't, even, I can't even remember, I think I was like vacuuming or doing something so mundane like that. And I had this real, this deep realisation that I was, I was, I was anxious. I was depressed. I was unhappy because I was not living the life that I wanted to live. I was, I had, you know, but, but so it's such a common story, right? That you wake up and you're like, well, I've got so much to be grateful for. Mm. You know, what am I, what am I moaning? What am I complaining about? What am I anxious about? What am I worried about? What am I down about? Um, you know, I had this beautiful, healthy daughter. I was living in a tropical island, oh, you know, paradise, had a great relationship. Um, but I was not, I was waking up every day with this anxiety of what the day was going to entail because it was not the life that I was wanting yeah. to live, like deep, deep down yeah. in the centre of who I was. And then I was like, how many other women are doing this? How many other mothers or, you know, yeah, women in, at that point, it was mothers, are waking up every day going, well, I've got so much to be grateful for, but I'm, 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 I am a mother, but I'm so much more than that as well. And I'm not living that, I'm not living who I am every day. So I started this, um, I started this, um, my business started from there basically. It was Spirit and Mother. It was all on mothers. Um, and I went into integrated nutrition because I went down that path of well-being, um, you know, what's individual you know, individual individualism in regards to nutrition, like what's someone's poison or someone's fuel and all mm. that sort of thing. But it wasn't enough. Like it, it wasn't enough. Um, I would, then I was running events and, and, you know, coaching women and having these nourishing days. And it would be like, oh, you know, you just have to listen what's inside of you. You, you know, it's all there. And it's there you just have to and then just sit you know see you later have, oh, thanks thanks for coming and then <laughs> walking away going that's not deep enough that's not yeah. um you know that's not where I want it to go and then I realized you know in in from that very moment I realized that 
you know, we are all these unique human beings that are living, you know, we're, when we come into this world, we're our own little humans and then we get caught in this, um, you know, life, human life, which is, you know, schooling and who brings us up and society that in order to be loved, accepted, appreciated, we need to be in this, you know, on this platform, you know, yeah. in the same way. Yeah. And that's where my anxiety was coming from because I was like, um, I mean, we're not, we're not supposed to be, we're not supposed to be the same. We're, we're all completely different humans. Mm. And um, we want people, I, I just feel like not all by any means, but so many people are walking around, um, you know, waking up with this dread or um, living in this fear or, um you know, living from those places because they they've either been conditioned like they've like you know through care you know um, when they were growing up they've been taught to be this certain way that's away from who they are or to fear things or um, there's that whole angle but there's also that they're just not they're not being who they are in their own in their own world in their own existence you yeah. know every day and. Anxiety and depression can be a, 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 a sign, you know, sometimes, not all the time, but yeah. sometimes that, you know, you're not listening, like you're not listening. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, I was like, okay, um, I, you know, my husband, he loved it. He loved it up there so much. Um, but even though I was, you know, I had this great relationship I my baby was healthy it was in this tropical place I was living in it was very isolated so I had some beautiful friends up there but the resources weren't enough for me um I wanted to live every I wanted to go out and experience things and and have all these different communities around me and I could not have that there mm. um and you know especially coming from this position where you um before you know as you know before you have kids you know you're, you're this solo life and then it it becomes your life becomes somebody else's as well in the past sure. <laughs> yeah and you're like hang on hang on who am, who am I now and and what what is my like where because you are a mum, but you're also so much more than yeah them. you can you know and you deserve to be mm. all of that all of those things but and I feel like at that time no one was talking about that was always you know as you know like all the I had a what the breastfeed and that's what you're doing like you're, you're googling things but it was like well what, what about what about the mum and what about her whole transition from being this into someone that she doesn't even know who she is anymore yeah and then creating this person I had personal depression and anxiety for a long time and it wasn't until I started um you know really like with ferocity and you know it's I had to had to have the hard conversations and said, I know you love it here, but I'm going back mm. to Melbourne. Um, people go, you crazy? You're poor Douglas. I'm like, yeah, but, um, you know, and then it was just constantly from there, you know, always learning and listening and, yeah, going yeah. into following who you are as well as being a mum as well, you know, mm. both. You can be both. Yeah, it's easy to get so, lost in the in the in the mumness because there is so much that is required of you to look after other humans, and it's so 100%. easy to just spend all your time oh. doing that and then feel so unsatisfied. But just you're like, I don't have time to sort it out anyway because I'm I'm a mum. Every time you wake up and there's someone there yeah. for you, <laughs> literally <laughs> sometimes literally. standing there. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes standing there, you're like, did I just see you three hours ago? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, you and then you do this. If you get caught in that vortex, which you don't have to be as a mum, you know, as you know, but like if you if you get lost in that and then you don't kind of recognise that yet because you are so busy living. Yeah. We, and we all are, whether you're a mum or anyone, you're on this, it's this, especially now at the moment we're out of lockdown mm. in these and we're all of a sudden we're all on this back on this wheel you can feel it isn't it? like so much yeah. to do which is great yeah but you can get caught in the bit like the 
the wheel rather than the you know yeah business of life yeah I um the everything you said just like there was so much in my mind that I was like I I want to grab onto that no no it was great but I just I think the thing that stuck out me out at me the most was when you said um you know you'd go to these events and they'd say you need to live your passion Mm. and there is so much out there um you know I think a lot of us know intuitively that when we're suffering with anxiety we forget who we are we forget what we want because we're just this anxious person so we forget that there's this whole other part of us that has desires and passions but but you like you said you don't know what that is and I would read people saying you know you've got to live your dream you've got to pursue your passions and I was like I don't know what those are and I would google like um you know, who am I? Like, what do I want? Because I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I'm like, somebody yeah. tell me. <laughs> Million dollar question. Yeah. How am I supposed to do? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And there is that underlying anxiety, of course, that, you know, that uncertainty. It's like, I don't want to make the wrong decision. So I don't want to push myself down into a path that I think is following my heart, but it might not be because I'm not sure. So how did you kind of, um, how did you go from that place to then, I guess, figuring out what it was that you really wanted? Like, was it obvious inside you? Could you hear what what your body was saying or did it take some time to kind of unravel all that? Well, when I, when I hit my rock bottom, um, I love the crumbling and, you know, I love sometimes crumbling, you know, this, so they hurt and they're the worst time of your life. But sometimes when you're in the crumbling, that's where, um transformation can happen you know in those moments where you kind of start coming out of that and one of my crumbling I was standing there in my garage with my eight-week-old second child and I knew I was in just in tears and um because I was having I had OCD at that point you know I was so frightened of this um child getting unwell you know I was a bit obsessive compulsive um in regards to keeping him safe and um you know yeah worry was just overriding me and I was in that moment I was like this is not who I am or the life I want to live and so I my husband at the time he was he was done in regards he didn't know what else to do and he and yeah, he, we were kind of, I was like, I, I need to fix this. So I literally went, well, I need to do something about this. So I reached out, I booked a plane ticket the next day. I had a four year old and eight week old. And I went on that plane <laughs> with these two little bunnies and I went back down to Melbourne. And I'm like, I need to fix this. So, you know, then I went in and, and within um, just those moments, those big moments of, okay, well, first of all, I am suffering from anxiety or depression and I don't want to, I want help in this. I don't want to, you know, live. And, you know, it never ever truly goes away, right? Like very, you know, it's always going to be a thing we we deal with every, every human, I believe. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in those big moments going, okay, I need help getting that, making those um, big moves to do that. And then when you, get that out of the way and you're doing that you can sit there and go okay well well, really what do I want because you know one of the biggest things to um not only with people that suffer from anxiety and depression but generally humans live so much so from either they make their decisions from fear or they make their decisions from their mind but really it's a whole body intelligence is telling us in any given moment, whether it's our intuition, whether it's our gut feelings, whether it's our emotions, our desires are telling us what is for us, what what, what is good for us, what isn't good for us, what do we want, what do we don't want. And then what we do is we let our fear or our head kick in. Our fear is, yeah, but what if? Well, what if that happens? What if that happens? You know, and so when you get that, if you're dealing with anxiety, depression, you go, okay, well, I, I'm going to get some help and whatever that is for you, whether that's, you know, going to get on medication or, you know, going to a counselor, whatever that is, and then making that transition, 
then um, when you're really in that crumbling process of going, okay, right, what, what do I want? And then because you go to sometimes, and I don't know from your experience, but when I went to so many different counsellors of going, oh, you know, okay, you have this. Hmm. This is what okay, I know what I have. <laughs> yeah. Help me help me deal with it. I love them dearly. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks yeah. for the trigram. Yep. Yep. I know that's how I feel. Yep. Um, thanks. That was just like an hour of my time. I do, you know, and that's them doing their job. But I, I felt like there was this missing link of okay, well, um, you know, who are you? What hmm. do you want? And in that, not just getting better, but coming from that space as well I felt like there was this big missing link in that regard that we are that individualism of who we are does not get recognized in that but they can't you know people it's it's like teachers they can't go to every single kid and teach them individually in a day you know it's the same with cat that's what they do but um and I feel like so that's what that's a that's a huge I'm going all over the place I always do this I just get excited (laughs) um so yeah, what happens is is really getting in tune, okay, with 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 you know you deep down in 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 who you are, know know what you want and what you don't want, and whether that's you know even the starting at that one point. But then what I was doing, I would do it. I'd go, yeah, but what if that happens? Well, what if what if the what if I go to I'd say yes to this thing and this thing happens with the baby or or you know the worst case scenario when you're living in the shadow of your fear that's one or you go in your mind and you go yeah but I should Mm. you know I really want this I knew this yeah but yeah but I shouldn't do that because you Mm. know that might put someone else out or that might be inconvenient or you know and they're the two places where in a lot in some cases not you know I would not always say all at all, but, um, you know, where those things kick in that feed anxiety and feed depression, Mm -hmm. because you're constantly living from that place of, yeah, but what if that happens or yeah, but I should. Mm -hmm. And so you end up living this life from those two places rather than who you are. Yeah. Um, And it's so interesting to me because, Fear is so different, um, which, you know, it's a huge part of anxiety and um, in some people and, you know, it can be so specific to people. It's such an interesting thing. Um, and there's this, we, when you dive into this fear and dive into this fear individually of somebody, there's also the opportunity to go on the other side and become fearless in that time. You know, it's almost like you're here to conquer this. So let's, it's, it's, you know. So it's a whole getting into that, um, into that, yeah, system really. And then that's that's what I was like with. Um, I wanted something more. I wanted to teach or tell people or help people, show people basically what their system, what is their inner guidance system, and how can we derail these. You know, fear has a beautiful place in some regards as well, but when it's ruling your life. Mm you know, it can really um, derail. Yes. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. Yes. Uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Uncomfortable. And, you know, and that's what we do with anxiety and depression. And what, I mean, of course we do is that we don't like being uncomfortable. So instead of going, okay, well, what the hell is causing what, you know, and I'm like, I'm not saying again, this, I'm talking about a certain type of anxiety and depression, not all, yeah. but sometimes, um, you know, we go from, um, you know, um, it feels uncomfortable as shit. So we 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 want to get rid of it rather than listening to it sometimes. And then so we're in this constant cycle mm. of it appearing and appearing and appearing. Um, and, you know, when you become aware of your anxiety and friends with your anxiety and your depression, you know when it's your normal pattern or when, you know, of, of anxiety or, okay, here it is, get a, get a ugly, you know, get a mate kind of thing, or whether it's the, that conditioning of whether you're kicking into those two places rather than. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <Yes. Ooh. laughs> I know, so 
I hang out with friends at lunch and we talk about it and they're like, I just, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things that you really can, um, I do the same thing. I go off on a tangent about it because yeah, yeah. there's so yeah. much missing from the conversation and it annoys the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. I know. And that's why I love what you do because it normalizes, you know, it brings it authenticity to like, this is what we need, you know? Yeah. And that's, yeah, a hundred percent. I love it. I love it yeah. because that d- diagram in the, when you go to the counselor, it's not, yeah. we need more than that. Yeah. Like the, the DSM, the, you know, the diagnostic statistic manual, they're like, oh yeah. yeah. So you check off all the boxes for being yeah. depressed yeah. and having panic disorder. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but yeah. Like when they treat it as this medical thing, which like you said, in some cases, yeah, there's the place yeah. for that. It needs to have that, that medical presence, but also we're, we're humans. We're not just, um, mm. you know, we're emotional, we're feeling, we're, we're impermanent. Like there's so much about us that just gets ignored. Whereas um, anxiety, I feel like at large gets treated like this, um, just like a brain, like, oh, there's a brain yeah. with some chemicals missing. Yeah, so let's 100%. just correct that. Yes. Yeah, it's so true. It's so, and, you know, like you said, some cases, yes, but it is, um, that's that, and that's, that's the important thing is that we're kind of being taught to think with our head and create decisions from our head. But because it's that kind of, you know, like you said, what happens you know the tick the boxes it feels like it's kind of in that line with, but it's not the head the head head is the brilliant mechanism that helps us okay I'm going to do this even though he's coming into play saying yeah but what if oh yeah but I should but I really this is this is where I need to go and your head is what will figure out the logic in how to get there you know it's a brilliant thing but to make your decisions or let that rule I just you know, and, and that's like you said, I I still remember it. I still remember every time I would go in, every time, you know, that you did the triangle at the at the council. You're here and then you become good and then you, you and then you you have a, a moment. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yep. That's yeah. <laughs> you've correctly identified it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah. And that's how it works. You're good. Yeah. And you're not good. And then oh, you're back to neutral and yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a triangle, but there's so much more, um, more in between, you know. Yeah, and yeah, and it's not living a life without anxiety, you know. It's still it's something that I, you know, it's there, or you know, it still creeps up, but it's just going okay. Well, getting back into that body intelligence, we're making decisions in your life, but also knowing that that's something that's part of you, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think especially, you know, and this is where this formed for me originally was that, you know, I had seen all these mums and I, I'd, I'd thought what it was going to be like for them, but I was a completely different person. And why, and this is where my whole thing started from was because, you know, hang on, my experience is completely different and and this is so basic but this is exactly where it started you know like the breastfeeding thing or you know you know whether you could do it or whether you could not do it or you in that comparison you were trying to be in this box and I just feel like that alone can cause so much you, you know anxiety because I think and I don't know whether you think this or not but I do think that we all have anxiety and depression within us it's just whether or not that gets triggered Mm. for me I feel like that yeah and to what extreme within us you know yeah and I feel like it's kind of sometimes this dormant thing and then something can happen it just Mm -hmm. brings it out yeah of us sometimes vulnerability is the word you know when you're vulnerable and you're like it just yeah yeah you, you reminded me of a friend recently I was talking to was saying something and she goes, um, she was like, yeah, you know, she has mental health. <laughs> She's like talking about someone that she knows having issues. And I'm thinking, what do you mean she has mental health? You have mental health. I have mental health. We literally all have mental health. Are you saying at the moment her mental health is suffering? Like there's um, this yeah. concept that some people yeah. have mental health 
and some people are normal and it's just not we all have the capability of of feeling anxious of feeling depressed um I, I totally I agree with believe that. that. Yeah, I really do think that it's not, it's there for everybody. I don't know, not know one human, really. The, the, from the outskirts, that wouldn't be at some point within a year, like a couple of months, like really. But they just, it's just individual to that person. And so is the, you know, the level. Yeah. yeah. And the, their window of tolerance and that kind of thing. It's all, yeah that's all variable but then that's yeah. why like yeah, you said so we're all varied. unique yeah yep yeah we're all unique and then I think that with this you know such it's so many things but such with anxiety depression is that you're trying to not be or you know try to be um something that you're not mm-hmm. can also and go, you know, okay, well, you know, like well, everything that you do, it's, you know, like, okay, well, this is just part of who I am hmm. and that's okay too. You know, hmm. that's, that's my blueprint, yeah. you know? Yeah. So and, when, so, oh, go on. No, no, go, go. I was just going to ask what, like, when you made the changes, when you came back to Melbourne, yeah. Um, I guess, you know, it'd be, nicely wrapped up in a bow to say things you know magically changed and but was that the reality like what what sort of next manifested for you in that space um oh god not a clean not a um easy ride by any means but um it was just you know and I was I was up there for a long time it was not my that my husband just wanted to be there I was up and down I love this place but I don't want love this place and you know we do this war with ourselves all the time but I also had this realization that when you start to do things in your life and you do another thing and then another thing another thing you realize that um you can do so much there's so much you know you as a person as an individual human have the capacity to make big changes to um you know swap and change if you need to or you don't have to stay um in this one place or you know you have the capacity to do that so the next even now like honestly um with my anxiety and depression it took it was still very much there but it just was more okay, I'm here, I've landed in this space. So let's sort of keep going on this path of, okay. Um, Cause I still had young, I had a, you know, 10, 10 month old um, of rebuilding, oh. rebuilding basically for me, it really was becoming, getting that strength back of, you know, even to the point where I, rem- I, I still re- remember it so vividly that, you know, when you're in your crumbling and you feel like you're a shell of who you are and you're sort of down, all the layers have gone and you're down to the core and even then you feel like you're getting smashed Um, and you start to rebuild, rebuild each layer. It was in that process of going, okay, well, who the hell am I really? Mm. Okay, this is, I've had my, I've, I've I've hit rock bottom for the last three years. All right okay, I've d- and I've done that and I've survived that. How strong am I? So now it's time to rebuild, but start to not give a shit about anybody else and what they think and go, okay, honestly and really, who am I? And then to do each layer upon layer, which takes time and, you know, leaning into what, what you feel and what you know and seeing where that goes and constantly getting evidence of your, of who, you know, okay, yeah, that's who I am. That's what I love. That I've been doing because I thought I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be appreciated. I wanted to be, you know, um, I guess not in a popular, you know, group that's high school, but you know what I mean? I mean, stems right back to then, you know, yeah. all that, that kind of thing, but really going, okay, well, who am I? And I remember when I first met my husband, I was independent. I was strong. I was, um, you know, well, I thought I was, isn't that funny? Like even when you go (laughs) later, 
I was so, I was actually, I kind of really wasn't living my true life then as well, but um, I was, uh, I didn't need anyone else. And then I had this crumbling and I lost all of that and I was so vulnerable and then um, so fearful of everything. And then when I started rebuilding my layers, I got to the point where I was like, I actually, I love you, but I don't need you. And that is such a big thing, I think, when you have your crumbling. Um, and I also, you know, having my triggers still going, okay, you know, you've been you've been running away. It's appearing, it's appearing at the moment. Um, you're running away for it. it's time to sit with it a bit and go, okay, for the next week, I'm going to sit with all the shadow that's hanging there at the moment and I'm going to right, dive into, you know, um what's there what's appearing for me right now and you know and also knowing that there's a little part of that it's a part of me that's never going to go away and to be kind to myself and go like I said g'day oh hello you're here again you know I'm in the I'm in the triangle yeah and it's here (laughs) yeah um but yeah it's really is that um you know when you have that crumbling moment of going rebuilding each layer um, but you know, that's why I like a crumbling song. Oh, no, it sounds so bad, but it gives you the opportunity to be stripped down to who you are and then the opportunity to be rebuilt, you yeah. know? Yeah. And that was my whole process. And I can, like, it took me, it took me a long time, like years, really, you know, and still, it's going to be, it's going to keep happening, you know? It yeah. keeps happening. We had the pandemic, there was <laughs> shit that came along with that. Um, And then you expand, you know, and then you get into that expansion mode now where you go, okay, well, I've had this moment. What's, what's, you know, there's an, there's going to be another side. What's on the other side of this moment and sort of going, okay, well, I'm feeling down. I'm feeling depressed. This is a transformational time. I'm expanding. What's on the other side, getting to that point with your mental health, with my story, my story is completely different to other people, but um and I know it's going to appear again (laughs) you know it will yeah yeah Um, but yeah that was really my journey out of um so you know it's that whole point of what would I who would I be if I didn't have that crumbling probably wouldn't be the truest version of my you know I wouldn't be here so it's that weird thing of hating your anxiety but loving that anxiety at the same time because you know? Mm, yeah. I, I feel yeah. that. I'm very yeah. happy that yeah. it all happened. It was the worst yeah. and really uncomfortable yeah. and yuck, oh. but yeah. so good yeah. in so many ways. Yeah. So is that okay. around the time when you found human design? Um, human design. So just before the pandemic, I was doing events um, and beautiful events um, with a really good friend of mine and um, having you know, sound healing and um, inspirational talks and stuff like that, really nourishing. And there would be times in those events, many, many times where women were like, this is what I needed. I've been suffering. Um, This is giving me a whole new light. Um, But then it would end and I'd be driving home and I'd be like, oh, that was so good. But now it's finished. And then there would be another one. But, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to go deeper and I human design started coming it was so funny because I was looking for something for a long time actually um something else because you know the coaching fields you know so big and I just wanted something a bit more boutique at the time Mm -hmm. that a lot of people weren't you know something new Mm -hmm. um anyway and then it was one of those things where you know several people in a day mentioned this human design like oh (laughs) <laughs> you're like, I, I get it. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, good day. Righto, need yeah. to have a look. And then um, I was asking for a mentor at the time and I came across a beautiful human, um, Brittany Eastman, who was doing human design. But like everything, whether it's counselling, whether it's PT or anything, you can get taught it, but it can be taught in many different ways and it has many different ways of um, being presented so I really loved the way she saw it and I became, um, went through her, but 
I also, I always talk about, um, you know, labels that we always have to put ourselves in a label, you know, a writer or a mother or a um, law, law, but you can be a mixture of your own label, you know, mm-hmm. what all the, all the things that you are and all the things that you contain and have experience and are qualified and you can be your own label. So I came across human design with her, um, but I, it, go, it can go down lots and lots of um, directions but the way I um, I deliver it with people is just basically showing them. I don't tell anybody who they are because nobody in this world or thing or course should tell you who you are. But it's about bringing out all these things that you know about yourself, that you feel every day, that you see every day, that you um, know within yourself that you think are, you know, small things. Like again, like vacuuming. I don't know what it is with vacuuming, but I always get revelations and downloads with vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> Just cruising along with my, my, my tracky dax. Um, and, you know, those things that you feel, even when they come to you when you're quiet, you know, we're always searching for, okay, who, who am I and what am I here to do? But it's all those moments every single day that we don't realize are individual to us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what you think of and what you see and what you feel when you're out in your life, in your world every day is something that I wouldn't see or feel or, you know, um, every day. But I think it's small and so I just put it in the back of my mind and I keep on vacuuming or I pick up the kids or I make dinner. But it's in those, um, so with human design, I bring out these, okay, well, you know how you do that? And I'm like, yeah, I said, well, I don't do that. Mm. You know, that's that's individual to you. You know how you um, do that during your day or when you're um do that in your business or do that in in your mother you know in your relationships or whatever it is every single day we're, we're looking for this big um aha moment of who we are and what we are but it's it's truly just right there it's mm-hmm. truly right there and when we step away from that whole thing we've been conditioned and being brought up you know high school and all of that trying to fit in and just like come back to those moments. It's it's so it's it doesn't have to be so grueling and time consuming and to figure out who you are, you know. And when you start leaning into these things more, um, it, they feel good in your body. They feel good in your life, and you start living this life by default that you want to live, you know. And this doesn't mean, you know. Um, everyone has to be a public speaker or you have to be on Instagram or you have to, you know, um, make millions of dollars. This is just like even how you parent or, you know, that could be your thing in this life. You know, that's, that's, but just knowing, um, yeah, all the, those great parts of you, it can really, really be a, yeah, game changer. And that's what I'm getting. So with the human design, instead of going, you know, in normal coaching, it's like um, you ask people questions and then they die, they figure it out themselves. You know, that's mm-hmm. the normal dialect. But with this, it's just sort of stopping that process and going, well, actually showing people what they already, those things that they do are actually individual to them. And, yeah, if they lean into that more, it's just, yeah, it's it's amazing. I don't even, I don't even understand how, how, how it works. <laughs> like, it, it's so spot on still. I really but I'm up for it. Um, So yeah, that's what human design is. So at the, like I, um, you know, I did um, a beautiful teenager, a mum. I had already had a session with a mum and she was like, oh my God, that's what I do. That's exactly what I do. And then her daughter, you know, what a time, you know, being a teenager. I reckon that's when it starts unfolding. Mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't it? Like where you really start falling away because you want to fit in yeah part of the group um she did for her daughter and then so you know it's a very different session for a teenager very flowy but I was like you know you don't have to be anyone else 
but you know this that you do and this that you do this is actually what you're supposed to do this you're not supposed to be at that person you're not supposed to act like that person this is what you're doing right now this is what you're supposed to do and if you embrace that part of you I mean, how much more happiness and rigidness and oh stuff can you stop from you know having to fix yeah, yeah. <laughs> if no, I had um, known that you know yeah. um, <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, so, and then we had a session going on, okay, well, there's, this is you and with the mom and this is your daughter and you're different this way. And they're like, oh my God, like you being able, that's the other great thing about human design too, is that you're able to see into the other, because we only know what we know. We only feel what we feel. Um, and it's super hard to see into another. So I give you the opportunity to do that too. Yeah. Yeah. And to, to understand better yeah. why another person is you know why that why do they say husband. things like that yeah 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 why you annoy the shit out of me when you do that <laughs> yes because I operate a completely different way yeah and now um you know even I did a wedding I was talking to her about the other day but I did a wedding with a friend and um she's a stylist and um she you know, she does things she, she sets it up really nicely and then she sits you know and I'm grabbing the next thing. You know, this is how simple it can go. I'm grabbing the next thing. Okay, come on. You know, or is it, she, no, 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 no. And then she would sit there and she would finish her thing and then she'd move on to the next thing. And that was so frustrating to me. Yeah. And you have this yeah. with your kids and you're like, don't leave it to the last minute, you know, but some kids are supposed to leave it to the last minute and it feels so uncomfortable. Um, you know, like, like I said, with the wedding, she, she was designed to do one thing at a time. So she would do that place setting, but I'm different. I run at a different speed and I'm like, just to be able to go, okay, no, that's my speed. That's, that's, she, she operates differently and she's actually doing exactly what she should do. And that's her brilliance and her creativity. Mm. It's a completely, um, yeah, completely different thing. So in with in with your family, like my kids are completely different humans. And I hope that, you know, even with um my daughter, for example, she's a sensitive kid. So I can see right now that that anxiety and that depression is going to be more predominant in her, in her life, if I don't um help her lean into all the other parts of it, like her intuition is um, and being able to feel things and see things that other people can't feel create can create so much anxiety, mm. you know, worry. Um, and my 10 year old is, you know, I can see it in her, she worries so much. And so it's about for her in particular, I'm like, well, you know, your, your intuition and that being able to feel so much about something is actually your gift. So yeah. here's the gift. This is your gift. And this is going to make you brilliant. You know, I didn't tell her this, but it will make her brilliant in business and community and being with um, somebody else because she's able to feel so much, but try to get her not to fall in that place of the fear because I can see already the anxiety is presenting and, you know, that that, that can feel really heavy for, a, for an individual that feels so much. You know, and that's that's the whole thing too. You know that anxiety and depression is is it's a it's a big full on world, and some people feel so much more than others. They 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 see it on a different platform than others, um, and so that can make. I mean, when you have that gift, you can. How could you not worry or yeah. feel so yeah. much or feel down or feel so deeply um, and fall into that? Mm -hmm. um yeah I'm rambling again <laughs> it's, it's great but yes <laughs> that's exactly what it does that's exactly what it and that's why I see in her so um yeah it's going okay yeah well look you do feel much and you are going to feel deeply and there are going to be times when you're going to feel down but this is how you lean into the other part of yourself so that you can that don't let that rule your life but embrace it you know that's what it yeah, that's what I love about it. It does that yeah. Um, thing. Yeah, which is, and she's completely different to me. So my anxiety and depression, my fear comes to a completely different place to what hers does. But now that I can see into her and I know her, I mean, what a gift. Mm. I hope that as a 
parent, I can direct her um, into adulthood knowing so much more about herself than what I did. For sure. You know? Yeah. yeah. Especially because as a teenager, like you said, where um, it's like we're in a, what do you call it? A pinball machine. Like we're just ricocheting from one thing to another. Is this me? Is this me? Is this me? And each time you hit a wall, it's like, it takes a little chunk of you. And then by the time you get to early adulthood, it's like, I don't know what just happened. And I don't know who I am. hundred <laughs> percent. And I feel yeah. like it's almost when you get to the thirties where it takes that time, doesn't it? Where you kind of go, hang on, yeah. hang on. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. just happened there? I want to find this out. I mean, some you do even these days. You do see some, um, you know, nineteen-year-olds that are already starting there. I'm like, God, what are they going to be like when they're forty? They're going to, you know, <laughs> yeah. very different to what I was. Yeah, they already have veracity and they know who they are and they're leaning into that more. But I really do feel like that it does for um, so many humans. We have that process of the adolescence where you're right. There's a chunk gets taken away and we start to yeah try to fit in mm. and we continue that right through don't yeah. we yeah right yeah. through, and then we get to a point and you're like actually I'm not living I'm yeah. not I don't know who I am and I'm not living this life so I still find yeah. myself doing that like trying to fit in and then yeah. I, ca- I catch myself doing it and I'm like what are you yeah. Doing? <laughs> yeah you know exactly. like why just find comfort in um like you said the the things that I do differently instead of feeling so anxious about that and feeling like it doesn't match what I should be doing, yes. just leaning yes. in. Should, should, yes. Should's the worst. <laughs> and, you know, that human experience is that you are going to have to do some stuff. Yeah. Like pick up your kids, you know, yeah, and help others, you know. But it's just whether or not... of your life is full of shoulds and 20% is, or is it the other way around? Yeah, for sure. Um, Is really, 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 I think, important in that regard. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I'm the same. Like, even now, so um, my design, I um, I thought I should have got yours before we had this discussion. I couldn't (laughs) have had a look. But with mine, for example, um, I don't, I have this constant constant cycle of going, oh, who, who am I? Um, even with what I wear, yeah. like I just did like a shoot for my business and I'm like, oh, I feel so different. Like that was six months ago, I've kind of changed. But then, um, so I'll go through points where some days I'm wearing cons and docks to school pickup or I'm wearing a flowy boat like dress and now I'm like I don't know I think I don't know I bought a Ramones t-shirt the other day I'm like what am where am I where am I I don't even know but knowing that about myself I kind of go you're just doing your thing you're just figuring it out um and I (laughs) I'm gonna wear my Ramones um Ramones top of my cons to school pick up and then you know just in that's who I am. But then I said it to my partner who knows exactly who he is in his design and in life. And he goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, that does not make any sense. What do you mean you don't know who you are? What, what, yeah. what does, I don't understand. Yeah. But that's exactly, so yeah, same. I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I was literally before this conversation going, I think I need some new clothes because I don't know what I'm doing. That, that honestly blew my mind because I, I constantly, I say to my sister all the time who, like you said, she knows who she is um, yeah. and she has a very distinct style and I could probably go to the shops and pick something that I know she would like. Whereas with me, I don't know what my style is because it, it does, it changes all the time depending on how I'm feeling. And yes. I've always thought that that was a shortcoming and that that was me not knowing myself, but <laughs> Ooh, you must be, you must have an open identity. You're saying you're the same as me. No, yeah. that's just who you are. That's, that's <laughs> amazing. And how great to just have permission to, yep. to be that instead of saying like, this is something that's wrong with me because everybody else seems to have it figured out, but I don't. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And some days you're in that, you know, especially with the open attorney center, I do. I'm in a badass mood. And I'm like, oh, that's when I wear my docks in winter. I know, you know. Like, and then the next day I'm a vulnerable like, yeah. <laughs> going in, having brushed my teeth. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I'm like, okay, that's just who I am. That's I, I know, you know, I'm still the center of my core, but I had this part of me. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. And now I go, oh, you're just doing your thing. Like that's that's who, yeah, who I am. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I'm doing Basically. that at the moment. Yeah, I love that. That's wow. That's <laughs> I'm gonna take that away and chew over it for a while. Um, oh my gosh. So I um. It, that blew my mind so much that it made me forget the next question I was going to ask. But actually, it's just come back. I yeah. have noticed since I've been following you that um, you posted about it today as well. You have a very, uh, I want to say particular routine, but it's not really a particular routine. It's just that you have created this structure that is also unstructured <laughs> to your day. And I'm really interested in that because as somebody who um, I think for a lot of people who deal with anxiety fluctuations, we can have these days where we're just, it's like a fucking write off, you know, it's like, I'm in bed today. I feel shitty. I'm like listening to all the what ifs and I don't feel good. And I know the other day you lent into that. You were Mm. like, I'm having this shadow day and I'm going to embrace it. And I was like, wow, what a concept. But then, you know, yesterday, you had your non-negotiable Wednesday. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah. so take me through your, you know, your routines a little bit. Well, the other thing too, um, and you can you can check this out as well in your design, but, um, and you know, you can just know this in yourself because again, it's all about um, pulling things out that you already know about yourself. But, you know, are you a person that, do you operate better when you have consistency? Like, um, and you can answer this pretty much straight away within yourself like does routine feel better for you do you operate better in routine and there's also another part of you where um you know uh, or are you a person that likes to flow that you just like to your whole day there is no consistency Mm -hmm. and this is a really interesting thing too um when you look at individualism that you know you have someone that likes consistency and even as in business on social media you know, they liked someone to show up consistently, post this much, do yeah. this much. Um, then and then, but some people are like flowy. Well, again, who made up that rule? Like, mm. who made up this rule that you had to be anything else but what you were feeling on that day? Mm-hmm. So I know for myself and my mental health, I work better with consistency. Um, that I know that if I, you know, I do this. Um, good things that I love and um, you know feel good for me Um, and I have these chunks like for me as a again as a human um, and um, just my I need space so I need space from my kids I need space from humans I like to dive in my world and dive into what I'm into that feels really good for me and so I know that when I'm not getting that my I get anxiety I don't I don't flourish I don't I'm not creative I don't do anything so when I have the routines um where that allows me to have that space and that is you know saying no so much um and saying um you know getting getting veracity to say no you know and um doing that but in having said that within that consistency I know myself in that there are moments when you know I felt tender and I felt um you know I didn't want to I just wanted to to bunker down and um the to-do list had to go out because I was having one of those moments and when I have those moments now um which again is so different um, with, with say how I deal with um, my depression, and anxiety, somebody else's, but like, um, okay, something's happening here. Why am I having this moment? Why am I having this shadow? Why am I not feeling great? And it's not always bad, you know, those moments. So within my routine, I always, when those times arrive, I allow myself to have them and nurture myself in those moments and see what's coming up in those moments. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I was supposed to do this. I was supposed to create this whole thing on my website. And on that day, I sat in the most beautiful part of my room and I'm really bad with journaling. I know it's such a beautiful thing to do, but I'm really, really bad with it. I only do it when I, when I want to. <laughs> um, and it's like this morning routine thing. I don't like a morning routine. I like to get up, have my coffee. I don't want to do exercise, you know. And again, it's that <laughs> trying to fit in. Oh, shit, I don't have a morning routine. Yeah. I'm stuffed. I'm yeah. stuffed. <laughs> I'm not going to be a productive human ever. I don't get up Never. at 5 a.m. No, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be enlightened. I'm not going to be successful. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be anything. Rubbish. I just let that go again. You know, trying to fit into this thing of what you should be rather than what you are. Um, yeah. So I had that moment, and I was sat there, and I just, um, I needed to up my self care in that that time, big time. And so I put in the massage and I don't do that very often. You know, I don't do go to a massage very often. Um, and I sat with it and, but, you know, in the past, I would just keep going, mm. you know, you just keep going. And then, uh, you know, it depends where you are at with your anxiety and depression journey. Like when it's, when you're in it and it's there every day, every moment, um, you can't sit at it, you know, it's different. Yeah. But we, I do, yeah. So it's all, this is the whole thing though. Too is knowing who you are, how you operate, and honoring that. And this is what I'm saying in every day to day activities will only bring goodness to your life, and that includes your anxiety and your depression, and, and making room for that rather than going, oh my god, that person's over there is doing that thing, and how are they doing it? I need to be that's be and I need to be that um you know that efficiency and that consistency rubbish like you don't you shouldn't be that's that's exactly what you should not be doing you should be your thing you know and that's the thing with the social media and where we live in we see these pictures and and we think oh that person why don't I operate at that level why don't I you know why don't I have that but you're not you know you're not supposed to you know Mm -hmm. um and so, yeah, I, I have realized that the routine is good, but it's my routine. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. And that's allowing for those moments when they come going, oh, hello. Hello there. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to spend the day with you today. Let's hang out. Yes. Yeah. What do you need? What, yeah. What's happening here that I need to really check in on and, yeah, yeah. get honest with. So, yeah. I, I think yeah. we just, we want, as humans, we want, um, a prescription that's going to work for all. Like we all want to know, I remember, you know, tr- when I, back when I used to do diets and like wanting to know mm. which diet's going to work. And yeah, that's what you see. yeah, there's not one that works for everyone. There's not a morning routine that works for everyone, but we're constantly searching for that, I guess, because it, you know, we want someone to tell us what to do and how to do it <laughs> so that we don't have to figure it yeah. out. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. hundred yeah. percent. Hundred percent, and that's with that's that's exactly that's the whole point is that we're trying to be yeah. I mean, even me, you know, recently I've been going about my body's changed again, and I eat well and I exercise, but it's not where I thought I wanted it to be. Well, it's time to let that go, like yeah, you know, evolve, <laughs> evolve. Yep. Um, because how different would it be to think the other way you know how different would it be rather than trying just you know yeah I do my exercise every day and I eat really well and um have wine now and then and you know I don't I I I don't want to go to the gym five hours a day yeah (laughs) you know I don't I don't I don't want to get up I don't want to get up and do an hour in the morning I want to have my coffee and sit there in my slippers yeah Mugs. yeah but it, and then, then if you're really someone who me. wants to get up and work out fucking great like yeah 100 yeah 100 percent. and I even I did that I was trying to do morning routines and I found that was causing me great anxiety that was coming in my chest I would wake up in the morning mm-hmm. going, I'm on let's go it's mm-hmm. got this half an hour in before the kids wake up I've got to get my juice in <laughs> journal yeah gonna, meditate know, <laughs> Oh, like holy! Like, and honestly, the anxiety in my chest 
And again, that was a sign for me going, that is somebody else's routine. That is yours. Let's just cut, cut it. You know, cut the, 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 um, the should. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In my head. Mm. And so now I, I make another time during the day, which is good for me to do exercise. You know, it's just even simple things like that. It's just, um, yeah, it's crazy. It's tuning in, tuning in, tuning in. So I'm going to ask you the question that I ask everyone, and I'm I'm particularly interested to hear your answer. Oh God. Um, if you had one piece of advice to give to mm. someone going through their darkest time or even yourself mm. going through your darkest time, um, what would that advice be? Just ask yourself, what do you need What in that moment? Don't think, you know, what do you honestly need? Um, and listen right into the center and, you know, and that's really hard in that moment, but, and just make a step towards that, that, that mode, that, that thing, that thing, what do you, what do I really need? If you remove all the noise and all the expectation and everything else, what, what do I need in that moment? And then, you know, go for it because you can, you can make that move. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it, and it's hard and um, life is uncomfortable sometimes. It's, you know, another, I think, huge um, misconception in the self-development world is that uncomfortableness can be a bad thing, but uncomfortable so sometimes it's just showing you where to go, where yeah. to be, you know. Um, and in that moment, in that darkest moment, um, what do I, what do I need? And you really don't need anybody body else. And, you know, sometimes, you, you know, we do need help or that might be, you need to ask that that might be your need. I need help. This is what I need. Can you help me? But you can just, you, you can make that move. Like you can, you can, and you will, like you have to, like you can. Yeah. Um, You don't need anyone. And that was with, with me. I, I stopped relying on my, my partner or anyone. And I just said, what do I need? And I packed my bags. And that next day I went and got what I needed, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and hopefully that would do another step and then another step and then another step. Yeah. And it might not be the yeah. same thing as what you want, you know? Yes. <laughs> what do I need? Yeah. Or, or, but I shouldn't because, and then that can all kick in. Does people, does, is that everybody's response? <laughs> Is that what they all say? Is it all the same? Do I just say the same as everybody else? No, 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 not at all. Oh, I, no. No. <laughs> should, should have um, planned that one and did something different. Yep. No, I mean, I think for a lot of people, it comes from a place of saying, um, you know, like they'd say, hold on or don't give up because that's, you know, what you feel when you're at the very edge, right? It's yeah. like, I can't, I oh, yeah. cannot do this anymore. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, but... I, I love asking that question because, you know, we've all been through a crumbling, like you say, or many crumblings, and we've many all learned yeah. so much from that hurt space. Um, and the thing that we would, that one piece of advice that we would give, I think speaks mm. a lot about our soul as well. Mm. And, you know, what we really needed in that moment. Um and I think you're yes, somebody I who that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. You're somebody Thank who you. um who wants to unlock that in people. Like mm. what do you want? What do you need? What is your soul saying? I truly, truly believe that um and what I'm you know, what am I here to do? I feel you know what <laughs> I'm here to do in this moment um is to, you know, I really truly believe that this life is we're all meant to bring our own selves to the table we're not meant to sit around this table and be all the same and I think this is what's happened in in um you know human nature and 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 the last I don't know how the whole time this earth probably but they're all meant to be the same we're supposed to bring it who we are to the table you know I want what you can do I can't do and I want I need you as you Mm. to bring that to the table and then what I contain I bring to the table and then this person and this person and this person and 
I really truly believe that's what how is we're supposed to live. And then this 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 human complicated life we've lost that. Um, and I want I want I want to know everything about you. I want to know what you have, like yeah. Lauren. I want every like because you have so much more that I don't want, and I want to tap in and learn from that and sit with that and be around that. Mm. Um, and that's where we want people to be be to be not just for ourselves but for the collective like yeah you know, yeah as a we need whole. a rich tapestry we don't need oh, the same God. fucking color God. over and over sound good <laughs> when you say that rich yeah. tapestry yeah. yes yeah. Oh, i want to sit a, on a table and hear all these things i don't know mm. yeah you know amazing i loved this conversation <laughs> that's <was laughs> a great way to start my day um if people want to get in contact with you, I'm going to link your website in the show notes, um, which is at stacyfisher.com. And you also offer human design readings. Um, yep. So if you're interested in, in, you know, what makes you you, get in touch with Stacey and she will, she will hook you up or even your, your, um, your kids, which is amazing. We teenagers, yeah. That's what I just thought, yeah. I started yeah. offering that because it sort of became about yeah but yeah 100 and i just yeah but i would i still there's so many women that go i want to know my teenager but i'm like do you know i just want you yeah. to know <laughs> do you know you <laughs> yes i just and i love it when i do it so much when i have sessions with people i'm like oh god i want to do you do you know how brilliant you are <laughs> um <laughs> as well so do forget you but yes um and so lovely to meet you I just feel like I've known you for so long like yeah I know that was weird when we first started Actually. the combo I was like this is strange yeah like, yeah familiarity like a long time yeah <laughs> so thank you so much for having me oh, um good. yeah it was beautiful thank you very much for being on the show